It's 1967, and John McCain, then a 31-year-old Navy bomber pilot, arrives in Vietnam for combat duty at the height of U.S. involvement in the decades-long Cold War conflict. The next six years there would change his life forever, thrusting him from the shadow of his family's storied military service into the national spotlight, eventually emerging as one of the country's most respected statesmen. But McCain was hardly a stranger to the limelight. His grandfather, John Slew McCain, was a four-star admiral in the U.S. Navy. He commanded aircraft carriers in the Pacific in World War II and was present for the Japanese surrender in 1945. His father, John McCain Jr., followed in his father's footsteps, also rising to the rank of four-star admiral in the Navy. He also fought in World War II, earning a silver star in battle. So there was little doubt that, like the men before him, John McCain III would also enroll in the Naval Academy, and like his grandfather, earn his wings. But that proud, decorated history would come back to haunt him, and save his life. A year after his arrival in Vietnam, enemy fighters shot down McCain's plane. Severely bruised and injured, North Vietnamese fighters captured him, but refused to treat him until they realized who his father was. That was the start of five years as a prisoner of war, a trophy to his captors. Five years of beatings and torture that took a severe toll on his mind and body. But still, John McCain survived. By 1973, he was back in the U.S., eager to begin his long recovery and to reconnect with his wife, Carol, and children. He had hoped to take to the skies again, but the injuries he sustained in captivity and his broad name recognition landed him, instead, at the nation's capital. McCain the pilot and prisoner of war would begin his transition into McCain the politician. <laughs> 